Well, I'd like, just like to say to all my fans out there who supported me for all these years, come to my shows, bought my records, requested my songs on the radio. Uh, thank you so much. It's widely known that George Strait is one of the most cherished and accomplished country music artists ever. However, what might surprise you is that he attributes a significant portion of his success to a particular woman, his true love. Join us as we take a look at the revelations made by George Strait about the love of his life. George Strait was born in Poteet, Texas on May 18, 1952. His parents were John Byron Strait Sr. and Doris Jean Couser. They lived in Pearsall, Texas in Frio County. His father worked as a math teacher at a junior high school and owned a ranch near Big Wells, Texas. The family spent their weekends and summers working on the ranch together. When George was in the fourth grade, his parents divorced and his mother moved away with his sister, Pensy. Despite this, George was fortunate because his father took on the role of a single parent and cared for George and his older brother, Buddy. They spent much of their time working together on the ranch. While attending Pearsall High School, George began his journey in music. He joined a rock and roll band called The Stoics, drawing inspiration from bands like The Beatles and other British rock groups. George loved the Beatles because they were extremely popular during that time. He also played in other rock bands during his high school years. However, as time went on, his musical taste shifted towards country music. He started listening to artists like Hank Thompson, Lefty Frizzle, Merle Haggard, and others. These singers greatly influenced his own musical style. But why did Strait begin to enjoy country music? Surprisingly, Strait didn't listen to country music much when he was young. Instead, he preferred listening to the news and the farmer's report on the radio. His interest in country music sparked from attending live performances, which were common in every Texas town. These shows stirred up a love for country music in him. Before we dive into George Strait's personal life, let's learn about his lifelong partner, Norma Voss. Norma Voss was born in 1954 in Pearsall, a small town in San Antonio, Texas. While not much is known about her early life or family, she grew up in Pearsall and graduated from the local high school. It was at Pearsall High School that Norma crossed paths with George Strait. Despite growing up in the same small town, they weren't close. However, everything changed when George asked her out on a date. Although they didn't see each other much after that first date, George soon realized he missed her company and asked Norma out again sparking the beginning of their relationship. In an interview on the country radio, George Strait admitted that Norma was his first love. She was there for him through thick and thin, from the exciting moments to the challenging ones, including his rise to fame. It's clear she inspired some of his songs, even though George didn't talk much about it. Isn't love amazing? After finishing high school, George secretly married Norma. They got married in Mexico on December 4, 1971. That same year, he joined the U.S. Army as a soldier, and this cut short their honeymoon. Sounds crazy, right? While stationed at Schofield Barracks in Hawaii with the 25th Infantry Division, George Strait joined a country music band called Rambling Country, sponsored by the Army. They also performed off-base as Santee. In 1972, George and his wife Norma welcomed their first child, Jennifer, while he was still in Hawaii, George served in the United States Army from 1971 to 1975 and rose to the rank of corporal. Despite his military service, George had a desire to further his education. After being honorably discharged from the Army in 1975, he enrolled at Southwest Texas State University, now known as Texas State University in San Marcos. There, he earned a degree in agriculture. Even after gaining fame, George remained connected to his alma mater. In 2006, he was awarded an honorary doctoral degree by Texas State University in a private ceremony. Additionally, George established an endowment fund in 1985 to support the development and operation of the Freeman Ranch for agricultural purposes, land and wildlife management, and scholarships. As for why George didn't pursue a career in the military opting for music instead, it's likely a personal choice influenced by his passion for music and perhaps a desire to pursue his dreams outside of the military realm. George's love for music runs deep, 
and he's held on to it tightly since his college days. Back then, he found himself drawn to music, and it wasn't long before he became part of a country band called Stony Ridge. They were looking for a new singer, and George answered their call. He didn't just join the band, he took charge and renamed them the Ace in the Hole Band. With his dedication, he quickly became their lead singer. They started small, playing gigs at local bars and honky-tonks in Texas. Despite the initial struggles, George's persistence paid off. Their fan base grew, and they even got noticed by bigger acts like the Texas Playboys. They got the chance to record a few singles, but unfortunately, they didn't become hits. George didn't let this setback deter him. During the day, he worked on his family's cattle ranch to make ends meet. But music remained his passion. He kept playing with his band, even though they didn't have any connections in the music industry. Eventually, George struck up a friendship with ERV Woolsey, who ran one of the bars where they performed. ERV had experience with a major record label, and this connection would change George's musical journey. Woolsey convinced music experts from Music Row to visit Texas and check out Straits Band. They liked what they saw, but they weren't sure if the country music they played would sell well, so they decided not to offer a contract. After getting turned down by every record label in Nashville, Strait thought about giving up on his music dreams. He even took a job designing cattle enclosures. But was this the end for George Strait? He told his band he was quitting, but his wife convinced him to keep going for one more year, and he agreed. Before we talk about his music career, Let's see what was going on in Strait's personal life. In December 1971, he secretly married his high school sweetheart Norma in Mexico. Their parents weren't happy, so they had a small wedding in Texas later. They have two kids. Their daughter Jennifer was born in 1972 while George was away, and their son, George Harvey Strait Jr., known as Bubba, was born in 1981 after George became successful. Sadly, Jennifer died in a car accident in 1986 when she was just 13. The accident wasn't alcohol-related, but it was caused by speeding. The driver, an 18-year-old named Gregory Wilson Allen, was charged with vehicular homicide. Jennifer was sitting in the front passenger seat without wearing a seatbelt, along with three others in the car. When the vehicle flipped onto its side, Jennifer was thrown out and died instantly. This tragedy led George Strait to avoid the media and stop doing interviews for many years. He and his family never talked about Jennifer's death. I just shut down, George said. I didn't want to talk about it, so I stopped doing interviews. Despite his grief, George continued to make great music, releasing 11 consecutive number one hits. To honor Jennifer's memory, her family started the Jennifer Lynn Strait Foundation, which supports children's charities in San Antonio. On April 10th, 2009, George's older brother, John Byron Strait, died unexpectedly at 58. He was found dead in his hotel room, with the medical examiner attributing his death to a combination of methadone toxicity and heart disease. George's path to fame wasn't easy. Despite considering quitting music, he persevered after his wife encouraged him to continue. His determination paid off when he signed a recording contract with MCA in February 1981. Initially, there was an agreement just for one song. If that song did well, the record label might consider making a whole album. George Strait's band, Ace in the Hole, stuck with him faithfully, supporting his live shows and playing as his backing band for his new solo career. In 1981, George Strait put out his first song with MCA Records called Unwound. It was a hit, reaching number six on the country charts and appearing on his first album, Straight Country. This song got him a longer deal with MCA and kick-started his music career. George Strait was really into promoting his album, Unwound. But his manager, Woolsey, said no to record company people who wanted him to change how he looked. They wanted him to ditch his cowboy hat and wear fancier clothes instead of jeans. The album also had two other popular songs, Down and Out which got to number 16, and if you're thinking you want a stranger, there's one coming home. Critics loved straight country. They thought it was fresh because it wasn't like the pop country music that was popular then. They said it brought back the traditional country sound. 
For the next 10 years, George Strait released many albums and each one sold over a million copies. After Strait Country in 1981, he quickly followed up with Strait from the Heart in 1982. That album had his first number one country hit, Foolhearted Memory. But it wasn't just the music that made him famous. Women were crazy about Strait. He became a sex symbol and they showered him with flowers at his shows. There were so many flowers that it became a problem figuring out what to do with them afterward. At first, they just tossed them in a dumpster on the way out of town. Later, they came up with a plan to donate them to local hospitals. After the release of Straight From The Heart in 1982, he went ahead to create more songs that topped the charts. In the early 1990s, George Strait released his 10th album, Livin' It Up. It included two hit singles that topped the charts for five weeks in 1990. The singles included Love Without End, Amen, his first song to dominate the charts for multiple weeks, and I've Come to Expect It From You. In 1991, his album Chill of an Early Fall was released. Straight wasn't one to dwell on his past success. Back in 2000, he put out an album named George Strait. It did well, hitting the top of the country music charts and landing at number 7 on the Billboard 200. Even though it didn't have any number one hits and didn't reach platinum status like his previous albums, he kept moving forward. Fast forward to October 3, 2006, Strait celebrated his 30th year in music with a fresh album called It Just Comes Natural. This album had 15 new songs, with two of them co-written by his longtime friend and songwriter Dean Dillon. Critics liked it, with People magazine giving it four stars and praising Strait as a natural in country music. Despite his three decades in the industry, George Strait kept delivering great country tunes. In 2007, he dropped Wrapped, which shot up to number one on the country music charts, marking his 55th chart topper. Then, in 2008, he released Troubadour, another hit. It was so good that it earned him a Grammy Award for Best Country Album. The following year, in April 2009, something special happened to him. He was given an award by the Academy of Country Music. This award was for being the best artist of the whole decade. And guess who handed him the award? It was Garth Brooks, who had received the same award before. In 2010, Billboard said George Strait was the best country artist of the past 25 years. Then, on September 6, 2011, he put out an album called here for a Good Time. Two songs from it, Here for a Good Time and Love's Gonna Make It All Right, became number one hits, making his total 59. Even though George Strait had a lot of success, he decided to stop touring after his Cowboy Rides Away tour in 2012. This was around the same time he released his album Love Is Everything in 2013. During his tour, he won an award from the Country Music Association for being the best entertainer for the third time in 2013. Then in 2015, he released his 29th album titled Cold Beer Conversation. Later in 2016, he started performing regularly in Las Vegas. In November 2013, Billboard honored Strait with the Legend of Live Award during a ceremony for the Billboard Touring Awards. In 2016, he was chosen as one of 30 artists to sing on Forever Country, a special song made to celebrate 50 years of the CMA Awards. He also released a song called Codigo, named after a type of tequila made by a company he invested in back in 2018. One reason for George Strait's popularity is his mix of traditional Texas music and more emotional love songs. He also showed his talent by appearing in a movie. In 1992, he starred in a movie called Pure Country, where he played a character similar to himself, but more serious and rebellious. He acted as Dusty, a country singer who got fed up with the music industry's pressures and the compromises it demanded. At first, he wasn't sure about taking the role in the movie. But producer Jerry Weintraub and Colonel Tom Parker, who used to manage Elvis Presley and was friends with Weintraub, convinced him to go for it. After reading the script, he agreed to do the film, but with some conditions. Even though the script included a romantic storyline with a local girl, he felt uncomfortable with the idea of kissing scenes. So he and his co-star Isabel Glasser decided to show affection through non-verbal gestures instead. This movie made him even more famous. 
he continued to produce lots of music, and in 2006, he was honored by being inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame. Pure Country also became one of the most popular home videos of the 1990s. Apart from being a successful singer and actor, he's also good at roping. Roping is a sport in rodeos where two people on horseback try to lasso and stop a running steer. It's a big deal in Texas. He learned how to do it by practicing on his own. In 1983, he got his first chance to perform at the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo because the main star, Eddie Rabbit, got sick. Since then, he's been a regular performer at the rodeo, playing for over a million fans in more than 20 appearances. George Strait Jr., who graduated from Texas A&M University, competed in team roping for the Professional Rodeo Cowboys Association. Before a show at the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo in 2006, he watched his son compete in the same event. His son followed his brother's path and became a country music fan. In 2009, George Strait began writing songs, teaming up with his son George Bubba Strait Jr. for three tracks on the album Twang. By 2010, he had nearly 50 songs that reached the top of the Billboard Country Songs chart. George Strait stuck to his classic country style and rancher image throughout his career. He was known for wearing Western-style shirts, jeans, and cowboy hats and boots. Despite his busy schedule, he remained devoted to horseback riding hosting the George Strait Team Roping Classic every year. He started this event with his father and brother in the early 1980s. But beyond the ups and downs of his career, his family, especially his cherished wife Norma, remained his anchor. For many years, George Strait has been married to his first love, Norma. They share a strong bond with Norma showing constant support throughout their relationship. George often expresses his love and appreciation for her on Instagram like he did with a Valentine's Day photo in 2020. Norma's dedication is evident in her presence at award ceremonies, including the 1989 CMA Awards where George was honored. While Norma usually stays out of the spotlight, she made a brief appearance in George's Cody Go music video in 2019. The video, filmed in Mexico, shows Norma celebrating with friends and dancing. On President's Day in 2021, George shared a throwback photo on Instagram showing him and Norma meeting former President George H.W. Bush at the White House. In December 2021, George and Norma celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary. To mark the occasion, George sang I Cross My Heart to Norma during a concert in Las Vegas, as reported by CMT. He reminisced about their elopement in Mexico 50 years ago when they were just teenagers. Norma has always been by George's side, accompanying him on tour and even staying back to raise their son Bubba while he was growing up. In an interview, George expressed his gratitude for their 41-year journey together, mentioning how they've supported each other through thick and thin. Norma used to stay home until Bubba finished high school and went to college, but now she joins George on the road. Their bond is strong and they still enjoy each other's company a lot. They're also proud grandparents. Bubba and his wife Tamara have two children, George Harvey Strait III, born in 2012, and Jillian Louise Strait, born in 2016. Tamara shared a Mother's Day photo on Instagram in May 2022, showing her, Bubba, and their kids. In a 2012 People magazine interview, George mentioned that Bubba and Tamara live nearby in Texas, which allows them to spend quality time with their grandson, Harvey. He's grateful for their proximity and the opportunity to be part of Harvey's life. However, George faced unexpected challenges in the new decade. His success on the country music charts suddenly declined with fewer radio plays for his songs. Despite releasing albums like Cold Beer Conversation in 2015, none of his songs made it to the top 10 like before. George admitted that this was a tough realization after holding on to his career tightly for many years. Strait is now enjoying the rewards of his hard work as he gets older. When he goes to Las Vegas, George Strait flies on his own plane from Texas and stays at the mansion, a fancy hotel next to the lavish MGM. Throughout his career, he is mainly focused on releasing solo songs. Even those who have worked with him may find it hard to pick a favorite album because they like all of his songs, especially his popular hits. In the late 1980s and early 1990s, he had a big influence on country music. Many artists started wearing cowboy hats like Alan Jackson and Garth Brooks. 
Strait has sold more than 120 million records worldwide, making him one of the best-selling artists ever. He has 33 albums that were certified platinum by the RIAA, which is more than any other artist. He also has 13 albums that went multi-platinum and 38 that went gold. Even though he's getting older, he's still in good shape. But now, he spends more time doing fun things like fishing and playing golf. To keep his tan, he goes on vacations to warm places like the Bahamas and Mexico. During his lifetime, George Strait built a lasting career by regularly putting out hit songs and staying true to his musical style without taking long breaks or making big changes. His dedication, steady output, and sticking to his style are what made him special and memorable to his fans. What do you think of George Strait? Do you think he wouldn't have achieved more if his wife weren't by his side? Let us know in the comments section below and don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more updates. Thanks for watching.